right? So there we go. Good evening, guys. How are you? Good evening, guys. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing fine. I hope you are happy. Hope you guys had a great day. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Carla. Happy to see you again. Good ¿Qué tal, guys? ¿Cómo están? ¿Qué tal su día? Cuéntenme qué tal les fue. ¿Tuvieron un buen día? ¿Un mal día? ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo fue? How about you, Carla? Why do you... Uh, <laughs> why do you do that? <laughs> Uh, we came back to the hospital. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry to hear that. So what symptoms is uh, is your father having? What kind of symptoms does he have? Like He had surgery. He had a surgery. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's, that's really uh, something that probably... I mean, you may be concerned about, but hopefully uh, he gets better, hopefully. Primero Dios. Primero Dios que sí, ¿verdad? Sí, ojalá que sí. Sabemos que la salud, ¿verdad? Es algo muy importante y de repente ver a nuestros familiares, familia muy cercana que estén pasando por un momento difícil es, es, muy, es muy feo. Entonces, pues, ojalá que se sienta bien. Eh, así que, eh, gracias por estar aquí a pesar de todo eso, Carla. Sé que eh, no es fácil, pero es que gracias. Bueno, guys. Hope you guys are doing fine. Uh, what about the rest? What can you guys tell me about your day? There we go, Jorge. We have Julio over here. So thank you for joining the class. Thank you. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Good Julio. evening, teacher. Good evening, Jorge. Thank you for coming. Sorry, teacher, Hi, but teacher. Good evening. Uh, I'm still at work. Excuse me? Uh, I'm still working. You're still at work. Okay, I see. <laughs> no problem. I understand. Not a problem. Julio, thank, you. thank you for letting me know. Thank you. All right, no problem. I know that sometimes, guys, you have other things to do, so that's okay. Uh, you just let me know that there is something going on. I I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, guys. So for today, uh, we have the last class of the day. Uh, I mean, of the week. <laughs> because today is Thursday, so we only have the class today. And then we have uh, tomorrow, we have uh, the day off. And then we also have the day off on S Saturday and Sunday. So uh, today is going to be the last class of the week. We are going to uh, complete the section number three because yesterday uh, we had something missing we there is like one topic only that we didn't uh, cover yesterday so we have to continue with that and then we are going to uh, work on the midterm exam in case that you guys haven't completed that i think that i don't think that that is the case because i can see that there were only like uh, four or five people that didn't complete everything, I think. So I think that probably you guys already did that, but we are going to just check it out just to, uh, in case that you guys have any questions about that, we can do that. We can just like work on that. All right, guys, so for today, well, and yesterday, if you can remember, we talked about how to give our opinions uh, using some adjectives. So we have adjectives like, absurd, wonderful, um, awful, and comfortable, I think fantastic, silly, dumb, all that, all that kind of things, right? Right. So we have like this little activity where you guys have the opportunity to uh, practice. And basically, I proposed you guys yesterday <laughs> to practice like for example, talking about a situation that maybe you can agree to that or maybe you can disagree. Like, for example, I was telling you yesterday about uh, what about uh, schools not allowing students to use their cell phones, okay? So maybe you can, you guys uh, could talk about that and then uh, maybe agree or disagree. So that's what we did yesterday, right? So I don't think we have any questions on that. 
And for today, like I mentioned before, we are going to work on something new. Vamos con algo nuevo el día de hoy, guys. <clears throat> Me disculpan si estoy un poquito mal de la garganta, pero eh, a veces como paso hablando todo el día, de repente ya a esta hora ya estoy un poquito afónico. Así que perdón ahí, guys. Vamos a intentar hacerlo lo mejor que se pueda. Bueno, bienvenidos a los que se acaban de unir. Welcome. Welcome, guys. Thank you for coming. So I was just trying to explain, guys, uh, what we did yesterday and what we are going to do today, right? I think that somebody from administration, I think that they uh, sent you like a reminder about what needs to be completed for today. Uh, so we need to complete section number three, right? Excuse me, guys. Yes. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I don't know if it is raining where you guys are, but here it was raining like, I mean, it was really a really heavy rain, guys. There was a lot of wind and uh, thunders and lightning and all of that. So I don't know about you guys, but it was raining really, really hard. ¿Qué me pueden decir donde ustedes están? Um, ¿Ha llovido o todavía no? ¿O, o ya, ya pasó? ¿Es it raining, guys? ¿Es it raining like cats and dogs? Because here it was raining like that. I mean, it was <laughs> crazy. No comments. Here. Excuse me? Here it finished. Oh, okay, so it already rained, so, okay, it's over. I see. Thank you, Carla. Bueno, muy bien. Eh, eh, teacher, no problem. No problem. Okay, very good. Uh, yeah, the, the reason why I'm asking you this is because uh, I know that when it rains, it is, like, difficult because we have sometimes, like, outages, like, power outages. We have internet outages. So, sometimes that can affect, like, the connection that we have to the class. Yes, teacher. Uh, here only lightning bolt. I see. But there was only some lightning. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Frank. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Bueno, vamos entonces a... Para el día de hoy, guys, vamos a ver un tema nuevo. Como les estaba diciendo. Vamos a hablar acerca de algo que se llaman cláusulas relativas. O en inglés son relative clauses. Okay. So... What are relative clauses? That's the first thing that we may be wondering is like, what is that? What in the world is that? Well, we may not know the answer, or maybe you guys already know the answer, but in case that you didn't, we are going to learn today. Vamos a ver. Entonces, eh, las cláusulas relativas, guys, son básicamente como una parte de una oración, por así decirlo, que une, en este caso, bueno, son dos oraciones que se unen a través de esta, este segmento, el cual nosotros le llamamos una cláusula relativa, o relative clause. So, let me just uh, share something with you first, so you guys can have an idea about what a relative clause is. Vamos a ver por acá. Bueno, como siempre, me gustaría que tal vez alguien me ayude a leer por acá. Vamos a, vamos a ver qué hay de alguien por acá que quiera leer. Maybe Sofía, can you help me on this? Okay. Uh, what is a relative clause? Mm -hmm. A relative clause is a type of subordinate clause. It is used in order to modify or adapt or describe a noun or a pronoun. Relative clauses are always dependent. Relative clauses must contain both a verb and a subject and always being with the words who, whom, that, which, when, whose, why, or where, or any variation of these words. Thank you. Okay, very good. So uh, just like Sophia read for us right now it says that a relative clause is a type of subordinated subordinated clause 
that it is used in order to modify or adapt or describe a noun or a pronoun. Okay. ¿Qué es lo que nos está diciendo esto? Que una cláusula relativa es un tipo de cláusula, un segmento prácticamente, que nos ayuda a modificar o adaptar o describir un nombre o un pronombre. Entonces dice, uh, relative clauses are always dependent. Okay. Esta parte, este segmento eh, que nosotros vamos a llamar cláusula relativa, siempre depende de algo más, okay, que es de la cláusula principal de la oración. So this says, uh, relative clauses must contain both a verb and a subject, okay, un verbo, un sujeto, en las cláusulas relativas. And always begin with words, who, whom, that, which, when, whose, why, or where. Okay, entonces las cláusulas relativas siempre van a llevar estas palabras, guys. Like who, whom, that, which, when, whose, why, or where. Siempre van a ver una de esas palabras en una cláusula relativa. Ok. Eh, aquí dice abajo, por último, a relative clause is so called as it relates directly to the noun which is adapting or describing. Vaya, ya vamos a ver por aquí un video para que vengan ustedes por qué dice que se adapta al nombre al cual está describiendo. Vamos a ver por acá. Les voy a pasar... Eh, si no tienen ningún problema, eh, ¿puedo, ¿puedo compartir eh, otra pantalla o todavía están anotando esto o algo? ¿Estamos bien? ¿Podemos pasar a la otra pantalla? ¿Estamos bien? Sí, no hay problema, teacher. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so we're going to listen to this really quick. Let me just make sure that the sound is on because I don't want to have the same thing happen to me again. I mean, it, it's happened to me so many times that I don't want that. Okay, so here we go, guys. We're going to listen to the video. It's really easy. And this is going to like help us so we can understand a little bit better what a relative clause is. Okay, so let's do it. It's a movie which stars Kate Winslet. It's a movie that's stars Kate Winslet. Hi, we have previously studied relative clauses of time. Today we'll study relative clauses using relative pronouns, who, which, that. As you realize, these sentences contain two clauses, a main one and a relative one. For example, he is the actor who won two Academy Awards. Page 89. Exercise 9. Grammar Focus. Relative Clauses. Use who or that for people. He's an actor. He won two Oscars. He's an actor who won two Oscars. He's an actor that won two Oscars. Use which or that for things. It's a movie. It stars Kate Winslet. It's a movie which stars Kate Winslet. It's a mo movie that stars Kate Winslet. Ok, guys, entonces por acá acabamos de ver cuándo vamos a utilizar who o cuándo vamos a utilizar which. Ok, which or that es para cosas y luego who or that es para personas. Eh, por lo general, para cosas se utiliza más that. Okay, for, for example, aquí sería like, it's a movie that stars Kate Winslet. That would be like the most common. But you can use both and that would be fine. Okay, that would be correct. So you just say, it's a movie which stars Kate Winslet, then that would be still correct. All right. And then for people, like uh, one people, two people or more, and you can say he's an actor who won two Oscars, or you can also say he's an actor that won two Oscars, and that would be fine, okay? So as you can see, that can be used for both people and things, but which can only be used for things, and who is for people, okay? Vamos a continuar. Winslet. It's a movie that stars Kate Winslet. We want you to know what relative clauses do. They join two sentences together, and give information about something in the main clause. 
Relative clauses are joined by relative pronoun. They join two sentences together. Ok, guys. Aquí está lo que se la, les acababa de explicar hace unos momentos. ¿Qué es lo que hace una cláusula relativa? Unen dos oraciones. Como por ejemplo acá, tenemos eh, él es un actor. Él ganó dos Oscars. Entonces, ¿qué hacemos con la cláusula re relativa? Que sería esta parte de acá. Entonces nosotros decimos, es an actor who won two Oscars. Or it's a movie which stars Kate Winslet. So we have, it's a movie. And then we have the second sentence that is, it stars Kate Winslet. And we uh, use the relative clause so we can join the two sentences together. Okay. So that's why basically one of the things that relative clause uh, does. And then it gives information about something in the main clause. Okay. Like in this case, uh, we have, it's a movie. And then we use the relative clause so we can give more information about the movie. So the movie stars Kate Winslet. Or in this case, we're talking about the actor and we use the relative clause. So we can say that he won two Oscars. Like he's an actor that won two Oscars. Okay. So that's what it does. Uh, just two things. It joins two sentences and then it also uh, gives more information about the main uh, clause of the sentence. It's a What relative clauses do? They join two sentences together and give information about something in the main clause. Relative clauses are joined by relative pronouns, who, which, that. Who is used to join clauses about people. Which is used to join clauses about things. That is used to join clauses about people and things. Hope this talk about that. Are joined by relative pro bueno, acá en esta parte solamente tenemos estas tres, pero yo en la presentación que les hice eh, he mostrado más. Acá solamente están estas. Eh, ¿Cómo les llamamos nosotros a estas palabras? Estas palabras los llamamos como pronombres relativos. ¿okay? Entonces una cláusula relativa está compuesta por este pronombre relativo más eh, un verbo. ¿okay? Entonces tenemos acá who es utilizado para utilizar, utilizar eh, para, perdón, para unir cláusulas acerca de personas. Por ejemplo, he likes the woman who lives next door. And then we have, perdón, guys, vamos a ver. To sí. join classes about people, which is... Then we have which, with, like I mentioned before, this is something that we use to uh, join uh, two classes about things, like it's a movie which we enjoy very much. So we're talking about something. In this case, a movie. It's used to join classes about things. That is used to join classes about people and things. And then finally, guys, we have that. And that uh, is something that we can use. Uh, so we can join classes about uh, both people and things. Like, I bought a car. It's very fast. Uh, she has a sister. That is a writer. Okay. So we're talking about her, a person. And then we're talking here about a car something like an object okay yes. <clears throat> hope this topic wasn't so complicated try with this following sentences i will give you the first part of the sentence and you finish it using a relative pronoun Re bueno, entonces acá eh, nos dicen en el video que espera que el tema no sea muy difícil yo no creo que esté muy difícil no sé qué piensan ustedes guys hasta ahora vamos entendiendo lo que es una cláusula relativa, está todo claro por ahora. Is it clear? Yes, Any... teacher, is it clear? Oh, awesome, okay, very good. Thank you. So, we are going to take a look at more examples before we can do this. I'm going to show you a couple of examples that I brought you. So, sí, vamos a ver por acá. Acá eh, tenemos como la estructura, ¿verdad? Oración 1 más la cláusula relativa más la oración 2. Okay, so we're going to take a look at some examples, guys, so you can have a better understanding of the subject. Aquí tenemos algunos ejemplos. So we have the bedroom that is upstairs needs to be redecorated. Okay, estamos hablando acerca de, de algo, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando acerca de 
el, la, el dormitorio, en este caso, el dormitorio que, se, que está eh, arriba, ¿ok? Arriba, upstairs, we have upstairs, we have downstairs, ¿ok? So, depending on where you guys are located, then you will say uh, the bedroom upstairs or the room upstairs, or you can say also uh, the room downstairs uh, needs to be redecorated, okay? So that's another tip for you. And then we have the dog, which bit my daughter, has been impounded. Okay, tenemos acá el perro que mordió a mi hija. Okay, ahí está. Entonces, si se fijan, utilizamos wish, porque wish es para cosas, o en este caso para eh, animales también, porque es, eh, es, está dentro de ese mismo grupo, ¿verdad? de co cosas o animales luego tenemos this book that I read last week has really caught the attention of the media okay, este libro que yo leí la semana pasada okay, en verdad eh, atrapó la atención de, de los medios por ejemplo And then we have another example uh, in this case we have uh, an example using who so we have my father who is from Spain, only speaks a little English. Okay, or we can say, my father, that is from Spain, only speaks a little English. Okay, so as you can see, we have like two sentences together. We can say, for example, my father is from Spain, and then uh, we can say, he speaks a little English. Vaya, en este caso, si se fijan, eh, como, les, como les mencionaba, ¿verdad? son dos oraciones. Eh, de dónde esto proviene, por así decirlo. Y en muchos casos nosotros como que omitimos el sujeto de la segunda oración. Por ejemplo, aquí pudiéramos des, pudiéramos, pudiera ser que las oraciones originales fueran como el dormitorio eh, que está arriba. Eh, it needs to be redecorated, ¿ok? It, but in this case we can just uh, remove it. We can just uh, not uh, put it in, ¿ok? Because it is already in the class, ¿ok? Estamos diciendo, el dormitorio que está arriba necesita ser redecorado. Entonces, otra razón por la que la cláusula también eh, es dependiente de la cláusula principal es porque se adapta tanto como al número, ¿ok? Si hablamos del bed, uh, the bedroom, es solamente uno, ¿verdad? Entonces decimos that. Ya si fuera, eh, por ejemplo, plural, tendríamos que cambiarlo. Sería, por ejemplo... Uh, no sé, I mean, the windows that are upstairs, en ese caso ya cambiaría, ¿verdad? Sería that, en lugar de is, sería are. The windows that are upstairs uh, need to be uh, replaced, por ejemplo. Ok, entonces ahí es donde se, digamos, eh, se ajusta a lo que es la cláusula principal, de acuerdo al número y también eh, de acuerdo a, a la, a, al género, ¿verdad? Entonces, en esa forma es como se, <coughs> perdón, en esa forma es como se ajusta. Por ejemplo, tenemos acá, this book that I read uh, last week has really caught the attention of the media. Okay. Otra vez, el, el sujeto acá en, de la segunda oración no está presente, se ha omitido. Okay. Entonces, ¿qué vamos a hacer nosotros ahora, guys? Eh, no sé si tienen alguna duda acerca de algo que acabo de explicar o podemos continuar. If you don't have any questions, guys, then we can continue. All right, so let's continue, guys. I want you guys to practice. So we are going to do something now. Vamos a ver. Entonces, yo no sé si ustedes saben cosas acerca de, de estas dos, digamos, oraciones que tenemos acá. Por ejemplo, Brad Pitt es un actor y tenemos eh, que Gladiador es una película. Entonces, me gustaría que ustedes me den a mí, y si pueden, anótela, perdón. Anótela a ustedes en su cuaderno, o en lo que sea. Oraciones donde utilicemos las cláusulas relativas, ¿ok? Se las voy a pasar por WhatsApp para que las tengan a la mano. Para que ustedes las puedan ver. Permítanme un instante, guys. Y ustedes me van a ir diciendo. Aquí les voy a pasar este ejemplo para que ustedes lo puedan tener como un modelo. 
and then I want you guys to practice, okay? You guys can tell me anything you want. Remember that you guys are free to say whatever you want. There are not any wrong answers here. Para que se los acabo de pasar por WhatsApp los ejemplos para que ustedes los puedan ver. Y vamos a hacer unas eh, oraciones utilizando las cláusulas relativas. Por ejemplo, podríamos decir, uh, Brad Pitt is an actor that uh, won two Oscars. I don't know if that is true or not, but we can say that. Or Brad Pitt is an actor uh, who uh, played in the movie, for example, in the movie um, Troya. I don't know, or maybe uh, what uh, Joe Black, for example. I think that that's another movie that he he did. So mm -hmm. we can say things like that. So Brad Pitt is an actor who is there, starred in the movie Troy. Very good, <laughs> very good. That's it. There you go. Muy bien, Francisco. You can say it out loud. Francisco, can you say that for the class, please? Hi, right, teacher. Uh -huh. Yep. So, Francisco, can you please uh, read your example for the class, please? Yes. Brad Pitt is an actor who starred in the movie Troy. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. That was perfect. Thank you. All right. Vamos a ver quién más. También tenemos Gladiador. No sé si ustedes vieron. Es una película bastante famosa, ¿verdad? And by the way, guys, uh, you can also tell me any other example that you want to, okay? It can be about this or it can be about something else. Like, for example, you can say, I don't know, maybe something that is related to your uh, life. Like maybe, um, so the the bathroom that is in, in my house, for example, it needs to be clean or the bathroom that for my my house, or I, I don't know, I mean, we can think about something else, right? Piensen en dos oraciones primero y después como que las podemos unir, ¿verdad? Podemos decir, vamos a ver, ¿qué más? ¿Qué tiene? Brad Pitt, uh, Brad Pitt is an actor who was married. Uh -huh. Yep, that is perfect. Very good, very good. What is? That's true. That was actually true. They were married. And then they got divorced. I think that celebrities don't really like to be in a relationship. My door needs to be repaired. Mm, very good. Okay, vamos a ver. Mi puerta necesita ser reemplazada. Pero nos hace falta, Sofía, nos falta como la cláusula relativa. Usted pudiera decir, por ejemplo, uh, the door that it is in my bedroom that is in my bedroom, it need, needs to be replaced, for example. Okay. Ahí estaría la cláusula, okay? Very good, very good. Ahí está, ya hay un par de ejemplos, el de Sofía también estaba bien, solamente se nos había ido esa parte, nada más de la cláusula. Vamos a ver quién más. Jorge. ¿Tiene alguno por ahí? Yes, teacher. Um, my brother who lives in Madrid is graduation in March. My brother who lives, let me uh, write it down. <clears throat> Just a second. Okay, so my brother who lives mm -hmm. in Madrid <laughs> Is 
graduation in March. Uh -huh. Ok, vamos a ver. Um, vamos a decirlo, está muy bien, muy bien, Jorge. Vamos a ver cómo lo podemos cómo mejorar, por así decirlo. Eh, so I understand that he is going to graduate in March, right? Yes. So he is having his graduation in March. Ok. Uh, vamos a ver. Is having his graduation. Así creo que sería mejor. In March. Ok. Very good. Very good, Jorge. So, muchas veces cuando nosotros vamos a hablar acerca de, de algo que ya está como programado, por así decirlo, nosotros lo decimos de esta forma. No sé si ustedes se acuerdan que teníamos el presente continuo, teníamos el, eso, el present progressive and uh, all those things. Like, for example, I'm meeting with my boss by the end of the month, okay? So that is something that I already decided, something that probably is part of my schedule. Like, I already uh, planned that uh, for that to happen. So we can say it in that way, okay? Así que muy bien, Jorge. Para, la, para digamos, eh, futura referencia, Jorge, lo puede decir así. Si está refiriéndose a algo que ya está como programado. Una graduación, yo creo que es algo que está bien como calendarizado, ¿verdad? O sea, le dicen a uno, usted se va a graduar en noviembre. O usted se va a graduar en mayo, por ejemplo. Una fecha bastante fija. O sea, Francisco says, uh, Toyota is a car brand that is very reliable for its users. Very good. Very good. Awesome. Muy bien. Así que ahí vamos, guys. Muy bien, muy bueno, muy bueno todo. Very, very good. Vamos a ver, Romeo. Romeo, do you have any examples? Uy. Yes, teacher. Uh, with your example, um, Brad Pitt is a natural who played in the movie Mr. and Mr. Smith. Good play. Very good. Yep, that is right. And okay. Mr. And Mrs. Mrs. Yes. Very good. Smith. Yeah, sí. Vamos a ponerle por acá el, la cosita. Esta. <laughs> Very good. Awesome. Thank you, Romeo. Thank you so much. All right there we go. Very good. Brad Pitt is an actor who played in the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Awesome. Thank you. There we go, guys. Bueno, muy buenos ejemplos. No sé si alguien más quiere participar o si quiere decir algo. You guys want to uh, say something, uh, you can go ahead and do it. Okay. Me, teacher. Go ahead. Uh, I had uh, one of, of Gladiator. Okay. Gladiator is a movie in which Russell Crowe plays a Roman. Very good. Okay. So... Gladiator is a movie in which uh, Russell Crowe plays a Roman. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Very good. Julio. It's a movie. Teacher, I have other. Okay, very good. Go ahead. Coca-Cola is a drink that is preferred for many people in the world. That is preferred by many people in the world. There we go. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. That's perfect. Right, entonces ahí tenemos, si se fijan, vamos perfecto. Eh, vamos, creo que ya le, ya le agarramos a esto de, de las cláusulas relativas. Tenemos acá como nuestra cláusula principal, por así decirlo. Sería esto. Estamos hablando acerca de la Coca-Cola. Entonces, es la Coca-Cola preferida por muchas personas en el mundo. Así que, muy bien. Ok, awesome, guys. Bueno, vamos a ver. ¿Qué más tenemos por acá? Uh, just a second, guys. I'm having some... I'm gonna clear the screen. I'm gonna exit out of this. Let's exit out. Then... See what else we have. Vamos a ver qué estamos viendo por ahorita. Ahí está. Bueno, luego teníamos por acá, guys, esta parte. Creo que es acerca de las cláusulas relativas. 
Ahora ya, pues no creo que tengamos ninguna duda acerca de esto, ¿verdad? Entonces tenemos aquí uh, one, a few examples. Uh, first, so we have this uh, example number one. It says, who is Ann Lee? And then we have two sentences, right? We have, he's a movie director. Uh, he made the film Hulk. I think that it should be like a little different, like maybe the Hulk film instead, but that's the way it is, right? So we can just leave it like that. All right, so he's a director. Um, I'm sorry, he's a movie director who made the film Hulk, right? So that's the relative clause right here. Who made the film Hulk, right? So we're talking about the movie. Uh, I'm sorry, about the, the director in this case. <laughs> sorry. Bueno, en este caso estamos hablando acerca del director. Eh, en, este, en este caso es Ang Lee. Entonces, por eso decimos, who made the film Hulk, right? Aquí tenemos el mismo ejemplo otra vez. Y acá en esta parte, guys, creo que era donde ustedes eh, tenían que como llenar, ¿verdad? Tenemos number one, who is Ang Lee. So it's the same thing that we just uh, uh, read just a moment ago, right here. So it should be, uh, this should be the answer, right? So he's a movie director who made the film Hulk. Or we can also say, uh, he's the movie director that made the film Hulk. We can say uh, in both ways and that would be uh, fine. Okay, luego tenemos el número dos. Dice, ¿has escuchado de los piratas del Caribe? Luego la segunda persona responde y dice, sí, es una película de acción. Y la segunda oración dice que protagoniza eh, a Johnny Depp, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿cómo sería? Vamos a ver, ¿cómo sería, Carla? What would be the answer in this case? Let me see. <laughs> Voy a poner un poquito más grande, quizás, porque. Yes, I is. Can see clearly. Yeah. <laughs> I know, yes, it can be really small. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. Ahí está. Yes. There you go. Um... It start yes. Mm -hmm. It's an action movie. Who it stars Jody Tip. It is an action movie. Who? Okay. Stars stars Johnny uh -huh. Tip. Are you sure? At point. And point at the end, okay. Right. Vamos a ver. ¿Acerca de qué estamos hablando acá, eh, Carla? ¿Estamos hablando acerca de Johnny Depp o estamos hablando acerca de la película, por así decirlo? Oh, the movie. About the movie, right? So, eh, we said before that we have two options. So, we can talk about uh, the movie. Yes. Okay, can... so... For which or that? That is correct. Very good. So we can say uh, it is an action movie which stars Johnny Depp, or you can say that it stars Johnny Depp. Both uh, answers would be accurate. Thank you so much, Carla. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, vamos a ver. Eh, luego, Jorge, ¿cómo sería la número tres? Sería. sería... It's a musical about a girl that becomes a celebrity. That becomes a celebrity. Okay, very good. Excellent. Thank you so much. Jorge, that is correct. Si en este caso estamos hablando acerca de ella, entonces nos podemos ir por lo seguro, ¿verdad? Eh, podemos decir, it's a musical that, I'm sorry, about a girl that becomes a celebrity. 
Okay, we can use that for both, for teams and also for people. So very good. And then finally, we have number four. Vamos a ver quién más nos puede ayudar. Eh, Beatriz. Beatriz. Vamos a ver quién más. Eh, Damaris. Oh, Beatriz, ahí está. Ahí está Beatriz. Ok. Yes, it was a great book. Which it's which hard to put down. A great book. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Can you repeat it one more time? Mm -hmm. No, let me see. Uh, mm -hmm. up. Which? Mm -hmm. Hard to put down. Okay, so sería which was hard to put down, right? Yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Beatriz. I appreciate that. Thank you. There we go. So, yep, that is correct. So, in this case, we can say uh, it was a great book. It was hard to put down, okay? Which was hard to put down. I'm sorry. Which was hard to put down. This is, uh, we are joining the two sentences together. In this case, we are talking about the book. Okay, we're talking about that. And we can use which or that. Those are the uh, two options that we have. Vamos a ver, puede que me salga mal porque yo creo que no he puesto todos los eh, símbolos eh, como tienen que ser, los, todos los, los signos de puntuación. Entonces puede que eh, no resulte bien, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver, uh, por aquí vamos a mostrar las respuestas. Vamos a ver aquí. So we have uh, the first one. Uh, he's a movie director that made the film Hulk. Okay. Aquí lo tenemos. A movie director that made the film Hulk. Okay, creo que me hizo falta el punto. Si no se lo pongo, creo que no me lo va a aceptar como correcto, ¿verdad? Así que ustedes tienen que tener mucho cuidado eh, acerca de eso. Colocarle los puntos y todos los signos de eh, puntuación para que se los tome como correctos. Porque eh, toma como dos respuestas correctas en este caso, ¿ok? Entonces hay que hacer eh, exactamente eh, eso, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver. Por acá, mostrar. Por ejemplo, acá tenemos el número 3. Dice, it's... Bueno, en este caso, si se fijan, yo aquí... Uy, perdón. <coughs> Al principio le coloqué este signo que no es el correcto, este, este símbolo acá. Entonces lo voy a cambiar. Por acá, por acá está. No, no este. Es ese. Bueno. Eh, otra cosa que pueden hacer también es copiarlo. Por ejemplo, bueno, yo lo voy a copiar en este caso porque es más fácil. A veces en el teclado me cuesta encontrarlo. Entonces, it's a musical about a girl that becomes a celebrity. And then, uh, as you can see, the answer, it was wrong. But then if I do that, then it's going to turn into the right answer. Just because of that. Okay. So you have to be really careful when it comes to that. Like in this case, uh, yes, it is an action movie which stars Johnny Depp. So maybe I, yeah, I have a mistake here. So if I correct it, then I think it's going to be uh, correct. Bueno. <clears throat> sí, creo que acá me hizo falta. It is. Lo voy a poner. Ahí está. <clears throat> Vamos a ver qué pasó acá. Stars. Pero me equivoqué en una letra por acá. Veamos. Teacher. Teacher. Dígame. Eh, lo escribí dos veces. Perdón. Yes, is. Yes. Oh, the 2B. The 2B is. I see. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry about that. Thank you, guys. Thank you for letting me know. 
That's right. So, ahí está. Ahora sí. <laughs> ahí lo tenemos. Muchas gracias, guys. I'm sorry about that. Sometimes I get, like, confused. And, I mean, I get focused on something, and then I'm not able to see uh, things the way that I should. Okay, so thank you. Bueno, acá tenemos esta lectura. Eh, no sé si la pudieron revisar. Me imagino que sí, ¿verdad? Ya la revisaron y seleccionaron las, uh, oras, eh, las respuestas correctas, ¿no? So she hated going to school, but always loved to read. Uh, loved to read. In this case, loved to read. Bueno, entonces vamos a pasar, eh, en estos minutos que nos hacen falta, guys, vamos a pasar a la parte de como el examen que teníamos que hacer para ahora, en caso de que alguien no lo haya terminado todavía. So we have, uh, in this case, one, three, four, uh, we have five uh, sections here. We have the listening, we have uh, writing, we have completing, uh, circling the words, and then reading at the end. So basically, in this case, we have the pyramids, okay, the pyramids, I'm sorry, the pyramids, uh, the Egyptian pyramids, right? So we have to listen to the audio, and then we have to choose the right answer for this. Vamos a ver. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> Perdón, vamos a abrirlo en otra ventana. A veces no funciona así. It just won't work sometimes, guys. So we need to open a new window. Uh, Listen well, to the conversations. I'm sorry about that. Sometimes we need to open a new tab so it can work. So here we go. Check the correct answers. Vamos a ver. One. How was your trip to Egypt? Oh, it was incredible. I finally got to visit the pyramids. And what did you think? I learned so much. Like, did you know that they were uncovered by Napoleon? Before he visited the country, they were buried in sand. Really? Do they know who built them? Yes, of course. They were built by the Egyptians. And did you go inside a pyramid? No. Most of the pyramids are closed to tourists. You can't go in. But I took a lot of photos from the outside. Do you want to see? All right, there we go, guys. Uh, so, what will be the answer to number one, and why? I want you guys to tell me. Number number three. The third option, teacher. Option number three. Okay, and why? Because he said mm -hmm. the parliaments mm -hmm. are not um, open to the tourists. That is correct, uh, because the pyramids, okay, pyramids are not, uh, are closed to tourists. That's what he because said, Because right? the, the doors, pyramids, it's closed. That is correct. Very good. Francisco and Carla, thank you. Visited the country. Okay. They were buried in sand. Really? Do they know who built them? Yes, of course. They were built by the Egyptians. And did you go inside a pyramid? No. Most of the pyramids are closed to tourists. You can't uh, go in. Allí está, ¿verdad? Are close to tourists. Okay? And remember, guys, pyramids. I know that sometimes we may think that we have to say pyramids, but it is pyramids. Like P pyramids. Ah, pyramids. There you go. Very good. So are not open to tourists. Vamos con el siguiente. Okay, muy bien. Vamos a escuchar solo un par nada más, porque no nos va a alcanzar el tiempo para hacer todo esto. Eh, así que solamente les quiero mostrar cómo el, eh, la forma en la que teníamos que hacerlo, ¿ok? When, but I took a lot of photos from the outside. Do you want to see? Two. Weren't you just on vacation in Africa? Well, actually, I was there for work, but I was able to take a couple of great trips that I'll never forget. Where did you go? I went to Victoria Falls on the border of Zimbabwe and Zambia. The falls are amazing. I really enjoyed the trip. I'd love to go there. What about your other trip? I visited a huge stone wall called Great Zimbabwe. The area inside the wall is supposed to be big enough to hold a city with 20,000 people. It's the largest monument in southern Africa. So, what happened to the city? No one really knows. I guess it's still a mystery. Three. Well... Okay, so what is the correct answer, guys? Number one, number two, or number three? Number two, teacher. Number two. Great Zimbabwe is the largest monument in 
Southern Africa. Awesome. Thank you so much, Francisco. That is correct. So that's what they said, right? It's really interesting because they say all of this in the conversation, but there is only one right answer. So thank you, Francisco. There we go. Vamos con número tres. Welcome back. So how was Easter Island? I've never been anywhere like it. It's unique. What's so special about it? Well, first of all, it's very remote. Chile and Tahiti are over 3,000 kilometers away, but it's known mainly for the giant statues. Oh, yeah. I've seen photos of them. They were built by Polynesians who arrived there nearly 2,500 years ago. It sounds like you really enjoyed it. I did. It was like an open-air museum with the statues along the coast, archaeological sites, volcanic craters, and some fantastic beaches. Four. What have you been doing? What do you think about this one? Which one is the right answer? The second one. Excuse me? The second. Number two. Okay, oh. thank you. Option number two. Thank you, Carla. Bueno, vamos a hacer una cosa porque no creo que nos vaya a alcanzar el tiempo, ¿verdad? Eh, le voy a mostrar por acá. Yo creo que estas respuestas que acabamos de, de dar, pues todas están bien. Pero vamos a ver por aquí las respuestas correctas, ¿verdad? So, yep. You can see, uh, this is the right answer, just like we said. Then, number two. We have the answer right here. So, that's correct. And then we have answer, uh, we have number three. And the answer is number two, just like Carla said. So, very, very good. Y aquí tenemos las otras respuestas. En caso de que ustedes no las hayan hecho, pues acá se las estoy presentando para que las puedan eh, resolver, ¿verdad? Y ya se queden ustedes libres eh, ya durante todo el fin de semana. Acá está. Okay, so we have, uh, what does mandatory class attendance mean? It means you must attend every class during the semester. Okay, eh, bueno, guys, solamente para los que no, como un consejo, ¿verdad? Porque a mí me pasaba quizás antes, yo antes pensaba que asist era como asistir, asistir a clases, pero no, ¿verdad? Entonces, si queremos decir asistir a algo, a clases, o asistir a un lugar, tenemos que decir attend, ¿ok? And then if we say assist, eso significa ayudar, ¿ok? For example, how may I assist you? ¿Ok? ¿Cómo le puedo ayudar? O let me assist you. Déjeme ayudarle. Pero acá para decir asistir, de atender a un lugar, es esto, ¿verdad? Recordemos eso. Uh, bueno, y por último tenemos, uh, what is true about performance? Then it says you are not, to you are not allowed to receive phone calls. <clears throat> Ahí está. Entonces, esa sería la parte número uno. No teníamos nosotros la parte número dos, que creo que a algunos les dio bastante problema. Era porque quizás no estábamos haciéndolo eh, correcto. Creo que a Julio le costó bastante esta parte. Creo que esto era. Vamos a ver. Aquí está. Les voy a mostrar la respuesta. Por ejemplo, acá. Miren lo que dice la instrucción. Dice... Um, rewrite the sentences as passive sentences with by. Follow the example. Okay, so uh, this is the one that some, some of you were having some difficulties with. Uh, we have Two and a Half Men is a popular TV show. It stars Charlie Sheen. So the right answer is Two and a Half Men is a popular TV show which stars Charlie Sheen. Bueno, en este caso, ya aquí era una instrucción diferente, creo yo. Para el de arriba era en pasivo, pero acá en la parte 2, porque hay dos partes, ya es una instrucción diferente. Dice, reescriba las oraciones utilizando who, that, or wish. ¿Ok? Entonces, en este caso teníamos las dos oraciones y nosotros íbamos a utilizar la cláusula relativa. ¿Ok? Por, eso, por esa razón tenemos acá... Eh, dos hombres y medio es un eh, programa de televisión popular y podíamos utilizar en este caso estamos hablando del eh, programa de televisión entonces es una which cosa which or that perdón ¿Ah? which or that 
That is correct. Very good. Very, very good. Es lo que tenemos acá, ¿verdad? En la respuesta. Which or that. Creo que ahí por eso, como no habíamos llegado a esa parte, tal vez no lo habíamos leído bien y no habíamos contestado de la forma correcta. ¿Ok? Entonces acá es utilizando eso, la cláusula relativa, dependiendo de qué estemos hablando. Right? Eso sería. Entonces vamos con la siguiente parte, guys. Yo casi se nos acaba el tiempo y por acá está lloviendo bastante fuerte. Así que vamos a tener quizás que terminar un poquito antes. Bueno, acá dice complet op completar opciones. Que okay, complete las oraciones usando la forma pasiva de los verbos. Okay, ¿Qué dijimos acerca de la forma pasiva? ¿De qué forma tienen que estar los verbos? Past participle. Past participle. Past participle. Very good. So, for example, we have number one. English is spoken in Australia and New Zealand. Okay, and then we have Spanish and Portuguese are. ¿Cuál es la correcta acá, guys? Para el pasado participio de teach. The first section, teacher. The okay, first. One. Very good. Very, very good. Y acá, ¿cómo sería la oración correcta? Right. The second one is ground. Is ground. Is ground. Very good. Okay, muy bien. Entonces, simplemente en eso consistía. Era de colocar el verbo en la forma del participio, ¿verdad? Y acá abajo dice, complete las oraciones, use el pasado simple o el pasado continuo de los verbos. ¿Ok? ¿Se acuerdan que hablamos de eso? ¿Verdad? Era como, so, uh, I met my best friend while I was taking a business course. ¿Ok? Combinábamos ambas cosas. Dos acciones en el pasado. Una que estaba ocurriendo cuando de repente sucedió otra. ¿Ok? Eso es lo que íbamos a hacer acá. Like, we were sleeping, but the storm walk walk us up. Very good. Ok, so solamente es sencillo. Bueno, acá al final, la parte número tres, eh, se trata acerca de completar utilizando los adjetivos que terminan ya sea con ing o ed. ¿Ok? Dijimos que con ing iba a ser cuando íbamos a describir a un nombre. Por ejemplo, acá. I think animated films are fascinating. ¿Ok? And then, los que terminan con ed era para hablar acerca de un sentimiento que algo causa. En alguien, ok. So, like in this case, we have, we are both interested in reading Amy Tan's latest book. So, that is what we need to do. Very, very easy. Y acá, pues, dice, eh, escoger la palabra correcta. Ok, so we have uh, these options. You need to choose the right option for this. So it says one of the crops grown in Guatemala is. Entonces acá tenemos que eh, solamente escoger la opción correcta, ¿verdad? De coffee. acuerdo. Coffee. Very good. Francisco. Very good. There we go. So basically, that is what you guys need to do. Vamos a ver. Y por último, teníamos la lectura. Ustedes van a leer esto de acá. Y seleccionar la opción correcta. En base a la lectura. Okay, so uh, do you guys have any questions about this before we go? Any any questions, guys? No any problem. question, teacher? No, okay. teacher. Very good. I'm happy that you guys have been able to complete all of this and that you guys don't have any questions. So this is what we had for today. And I will see you guys back on Monday. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy the weekend. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, Thank you teacher. See you next week. You're welcome, guys. Bye. Thank you, teacher.
Good night. Good night, teacher. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Bye, teacher. See you, everybody.